Greetings, physicists of the universe. Welcome to the beautiful world of Lagrangian mechanics. In this video, I have attempted to explain an approach, a mathematical tool, which is very powerful in real world physics. It is called Lagrangian formalism for dynamical systems. This concept was specifically meant to reproduce all the equations of motion, the laws of Newton, and to give new insight into other kinds of dynamical systems. This is a very general formalism and it kind of explains why Newton's equations arise. So you might have wondered from your high school courses on physics, why do we have Newton's equation of motion? Is there, is there any underlining structure, something more fundamental in nature? from which you get these equations of motion, all these forces acting in our, in our mechanical systems and the Lagrangian formalism answers this question. For instance, the force equals mass times acceleration for a single particle moving in space. So where does this come from? Is there a deeper principle? It turns out all equations of motion in nature, both classical and quantum mechanical in behavior can actually be obtained from certain basic principles of classical physics called action principles. And the extremization of action principles which I am going to define leads to equivalent of Newton's equation of motion. Now whatever we will deal in this series of videos will be simple mechanical systems in the beginning but as we see the applications in a subject called engineering dynamics, there we are going to solve some real world very difficult and hard to comprehend problems so called by Lagrangian mechanics and we are going to simplify the working process as far as we can and let us appreciate this formalism and make it simple. So for example, now let me take an analogy to explain what exactly is this kind of a formalism dealing with so you take suppose if a system is in static equilibrium so that tends to minimize its potential energy in fact minimum energy is the core idea of stability of a system anything which wants to be stable wants to have the least possible configuration of energy this is very fundamental in nature and this is exactly the kind of analogy you can refer to to understand this kind of formalism called Lagrangian formalism which has some kind of heavy usage of uh, variational calculus and we need to operate here rigorous mathematics to actually understand how things are working on the theoretical grounds. So in fact this kind of minimization or maximization of uh, fundamental quantities which are uh, belonging to a class to define this kind of systems we, which we are studying. So this type of concept is uh, being dealt in this type of uh, approach which we are going to learn. So in fact this energy which I said for a system which is stable so that is minimum in that case of static equilibrium but it might be that now you can take this example say you have a bowl and there is a ball at the at this bottommost position of this ball so this ball is at static equilibrium by which i mean that it has minimum potential energy but now suppose that you have your ball inverted like this and you keep a ball over here at the topmost point you know just perfectly balanced so that it does not roll on either way so which means at this point it is in dynamic equilibrium and by saying so, I mean to say that its energy can be maximum. So it is not necessary in Lagrangian mechanics that uh, the energy or any quantity which will define a system, it need not be only minimum, it can be maximum as well. What it needs to be satisfying is the condition of extremum, either a minimum or a maximum. That is an extremization of a more fundamental principle. Now these are stuff which are related to energy, whatever I have said so far. But it can be that for a thermodynamic system, it might vary, the uh, defining quantity may vary for uh, 
system of dealing with optics so various systems may be there but for our course here we are going to deal with mechanical systems maybe rods oscillating masses going up and down and things like that but uh, so far this is very general approach and uh, by which i mean that we have to extremize a function called action so what was i saying about that action principle so it is basically based upon the principle of least action so this whole lagrangian formalism is defined and you can say it is built upon this core principle called the principle of least action which let me explain with the help of some very simple system so let us consider a single particle system so you know here a point particle will be our system let us say at some time t1 the particle is at this position yeah at this position at some time t1 and you know after after say some time del t it is found at some another time t2 it is over here now there are infinite possibilities for this particle to move from t1 to t2 there are various trajectories possible let us take an arbitrary trajectory and that will satisfy some kind of condition over here it might be this type of a trajectory very arbitrary it might be like this it might be some way like this it might be haphazardly made it is very random but what the principle of least action states let me quote it so of all the possible motions from time t1 to t2 the system chooses that particular path along which the action which is a function of time i will describe that action so that action is at an extremum here by action i mean a function of time this action is a function of t1 and t2 it's a multi parameter function or you can say a variable which is depending on more than two parameters so that's t2 so now what do we mean by saying that this action is at an extremum action is a function of t1 and t2 it will be at an extremum when it is either a maxima or a minima now to achieve that that particle should travel along such a path from t1 now this t1 t2 are time phases and here in lagrangian mechanics time may, is not clearly defined the whole theory in fact is not clearly defined that is what we mean by uh, formalism you know so when it moves from so time t1 to the phase t2 with by some random arbitrary path the path must satisfy a condition and that condition is that it this particle will travel along that path along which this action is at an extremum now let me define action more clearly this is a of brief overview of whatever is going to happen in the principle of least action and the interesting application and the power of this function is that it is also used in optics to define the very cause of refraction why light bends when it travels from this point to say this point where this is your normal why it bends like this depending upon the various values of the refractive indices of the different mediums passing that is also explained by this principle of least action in fact this has got applications in a uh, subject of quantum mechanics as well in quantum physics we use this principle so it is very fundamental to all branches and all uh, disciplines studied so far now what i mean by action is basically it is integral definite from t1 to t2 l dt this is how it's defined l dt now i'll tell what this l means right over here but for the moment assume that this is action which is depending upon those limits of time which are defined phases over here so this is action now the principle of least action says that this quantity which is action is at an extremum mathematically that means del of integral from t1 to t2 this has got some ai enabled that type of stuff happening yeah this is zero now what this delta means here is that delta is the variation sorry yeah delta is the variation of a quantity and that quantity is this 
action of T1 and T2. Basically, there should not be any variation of action. That should be the condition of extremum. Condition of extremum. To satisfy condition of extremum, action must not have any variation. This is the fundamental logic behind all of this stuff I am talking about. So del of this integral t1 to t2 l dt must be equal to 0. Now I will just mathematically manipulate all of these uh, kind of equations which we are going to get. Uh, we cannot foresee from this stage. But we, we will solve this and mathematically manipulate this particular equation to derive at something which has got importance in both physics and mathematics and even to a great extent in engineering. So let us write this is del of so this is the thing now in this equation as we proceed we can say that before proceeding okay so i need to tell you what that l is the whole story of this uh, Lagrangian mechanics and whatever Lagrangian formalism you say, the whole story of this movie or it, 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 this plot revolves around a central quantity which is called a Lagrange. The Lagrange is a function which has got various parameters to depend on, like it depends on Q1, Q2, Q3 q4 till some you know qn where n is a finite integer i'll tell you don't worry what those q's are here just remember that n is a finite integer that's very important condition over here and let me define l which is a central quantity here called the lagrange you can say it is a variable or a multi-parameter function which is our hero in our story the lagrange it is a function of you know it is a function of q1 q2 not writing much there are many types of uh, parameters on which that l depends till some qn it also depends on q1 dot that qi dot means the first order derivative of q1 it also depends on q2 dot and subsequently corresponding to each qi it depends on the qn dot also it also depends on time so basically l this L is a variable called Lagrange which has got a multi-parameter dependence. The parameters are some q i's, some q dot i's and time. These are the various important parameters which will define our hero L and this L is Lagrange. Now one thing which needs to be mentioned over here is that I think it should be mentioned it is that this Lagrange is a variable which does not have any kind of physical significance well it has some important mathematical mathematical uses like it is something you know which is mathematically very useful it's a kind of tool which has not got as such any prominent observable physical significance but it has got some very important uses as being a part of our calculations and being a part of a very useful mathematical variable that is our hero Lagrange that is a variable named after the scientist Joseph Louis Lagrange better rather I must say that he's a physicist who discovered this type of a formalism rather to contribute largely in the field of mathematics but no matter everything is just a mixture of these whole concepts and let us carry on our proceedings about uh, some big equation which we are going to derive but before that we noted that l was a l was some function which depended on various types of parameters you can say independent variables i'll tell what those are but if i tell them now things will become more complicated as i move but as for now just know that this qi i can be from one to some finite integer this qi is a generalized coordinate of the system which we are studying so it is a generalized coordinate now that generalized coordinate might seem to be something more of a vague idea but it has got some more stuff to do with so i will deal with generalized coordinates at a later video 
but for now just know that q is some kind of you know you are familiar with cartesian coordinates polar coordinates but this is a more general coordinate uh, what i mean by general exactly will be discussed uh, after some time and q i dot is first order derivative of this stuff so that is basically d by dt of this generalized coordinate now you can i can give you a very vague analogy to relate to this suppose our generalized coordinate is uh, cartesian coordinate the x axis so basically one of the one of the coordinates you to represent any particle point in space is x so let us say so what is x dot x dot is the velocity corresponding to x this is how we can relate q and q dot this is an analogy this has got much more deeper meanings just as to say i just gave you a brief idea of what we are doing with but the some more important and more basic things are there before we go into this type of stuff of terminology so let us proceed we know we can now reduce this l which is a function which depends on q1 q2 so as on till n it also depends on q1 dot like that till qn dot it also depends on time now you can see that if i use this l in my equation which involves that integral things will become very complicated i cannot deal with so many parameters and it is useless to do so so to simplify all mathematical manipulations i simply take my l as a function of some q q dot and t so as to just get the simplified result but the result is same if you use this many parameters you get the same equation if you use this many parameters you just use the same equation just the thing is that you simply get something which is much more simpler in terms of the mathematics you are using and i think it will be more clear to the audience at this point of time so we are considering l to be a function of three parameters the generalized coordinate the first order derivative of the generalized coordinate and time we will talk about all of these parameters in great detail so that is not something to be con to be of a matter of concern as of now let us address our general equation which we were trying to deal with the extremum of action that is del of this integral from t1 to t2 then we have l dt now this l i have defined as a function now what happens is that i will substitute l with that in terms of its parameters and those who know variational calculus will understand the next step now before the next step the thing is that i'm doing it slowly this delta is variation and this quantity is action and this operation is definite integral operation of you know and a kind of reverse derivative kind of people who are familiar with calculus know what how integration actually operates on a quantity with respect to some quantity so here the thing is that we can simply insert this delta inside the integral and that is because this type of operation is commutative in nature because this delta is actually variation of this whole quantity which has got nothing to do with the integral of action which means you can simply put this delta inside the integral it has got nothing to do with how the integration process proceeds so basically we can commutate this delta inside and we can have our further results and we proceed as per as per this understanding so basically i will commutate this delta i will put it inside the integral sign and one such type of integration was famous famously used by a uh, physicist richard philip feynman so he called this the leibniz rule but later it became famous as the feynman trick of integration and it is useful in evaluating some kind of uh, definite integrals as such so now zero becomes equal integral I have to disable this ai so basically this is the thing now those people who know partial derivatives will know my next step is integral so what i am getting is if we look at the expression it is partial derivative of l with respect to partial derivative of q and here i have a partial with respect to q and then plus partial derivative of l 
with respect to partial derivative of q dot and there I have a q dot over here and then I have my differential of time dt so basically this is what we get if we put l in terms of those q q dot and t and operate a partial derivative of these with respective parameters and I have simplified them you know three of these parameters make it this small if I had so many in a finite number but which was arbitrary so then it would become very long actually I don't have space so much over here but now I proceed by saying that as you can observe from here you can see something we can proceed by saying that this q dot this q dot is nothing but dq by dt right I've defined what that dot of a generalized coordinate means so basically that q dot is d by dt of q and I have written in one of the in in this you know integral that this del of q dot again as you noted before that del has got nothing to do with the integral similarly the del operation is variation it has got nothing to do with this d by dt so if I write this it is also equal to d by dt of del q see it is simply commutating this del operation has got nothing to do with this d by dt operation so we can commute it that if, if it had some kind of restrictions then we could not do this but here we can do this so I am representing del of q dot in my integral expression as d by dt of del q because q dot is d by dt of q and basically I commuted I put this del q dot over here so d by dt of del q I've done that I put the del under the differential operator and now I'm going to substitute that in my equation so I get that equal to integral from t1 to t2 this stuff so let me first write the dt otherwise it becomes a bit tough to understand and now I have my expression which is coming as okay, let me write with this one it's got a better right yeah so it's basically dt of you know you get this stuff partial of l the same expression as you remember i wrote okay so this has got something this has gone crazy yeah and now i have this term this was our first term in that expression i previously wrote plus now we have partial of l with respect to partial of q dot first order derivative of generalized coordinate and now if you remember i wrote here this del q dot at in this in this part so here i am writing d by dt of del q basically i am just doing what i just stated before that you can commute it the first order derivative and this del so you get here d by dt of del q and why I did this, I will tell that also. It has got a specific reason. This expression written in red has got some real importance. So why red was better. Make it contrast from the white. And now you see this del q over here and here. You can actually take it out from this expression and make it simpler. So to do so, from this step onwards, what I do is I'll integrate it by parts. For those of you who want a uh, overview of what is integration by parts it is basically integration of first function with respect to a second function written like this let us say they are functions of x so you write it like this and it is first function into integration of second function minus integration of differentiation of first function into integration of second function and then we have our tx differential of x this is basically the rule followed and that is what I'm going to do here to simplify the expression in red to deal with those del q's which are common these del q's so to take that out I apply integration by parts so I get 0 equal to 
this integral from t1 to t2 so now I basically okay let me write the dt's first so now I have this expression as partial of L it remains the same with respect to partial of Q this part is same and I am getting d by dt of partial of L with respect to partial of Q dot and basically that has got rid of this del q which gets multiplied to this whole expression and we also get another term which is partial of l with respect to partial of this q dot i've skipped one step i've not directly written the biparts product because that will take some more time so i'm just simplifying the stuff and writing the direct result you get after this step you get this one and then you can try it as an exercise so here you get partial of L with respect to del Q and then you get partial of Q. This is the additional term I am getting and this is definite from T2 as upper limit, T1 as lower limit. So basically this is the thing I am getting over here and what the next step is that you, you see now something very important that let me change the font color yeah you see this expression what does this tell us about what will happen if we put t1 t2 into this expression what are they talking so to understand only this expression i need to go back to my diagram so for which i need to clear my board clear this stuff also and then show you what i mean by that expression which i pointed out suppose the particle at a, some instant of time is at this position exactly at this position this red dot sometime t1 it goes to this position at some time t2 it follows some arbitrary path for which satisfies the principle of least action and it reaches this path our system is a point particle in moving in space this is the principle of least action now you can say that it can move like this to reach that point it can move like this to reach that point in this direction or in this direction the thing is that there are in fact infinite possibilities to do so but this distance between any two arbitrary paths this one is basically called it's writing itself okay so this variation you get this difference between any two such arbitrary paths is what is called as del q over here you know q is that small generalized Cartesian coordinate with or maybe any generalized coordinate which represents the direction of displacement and del q represents the change in this displacement direction which means this was the direction of displacement this was another direction of displacement this is the del q variation of this generalized coordinate basically so a particle moving here will have some one q as a generalized coordinate over here it will have some other q and this is the variation of the generalized coordinate simply the delta here means some variation of any quantity which i write here variation of x so del x means variation of x so this is the del q over here now you observe that at t1 what happens the particle is at a particular point there is no variation of q is there any variation it's simply that del q at t1 is zero similarly del q is also zero at t2 so at t2 it is a specified point the the generalized coordinates are mathematically well defined and they are not having any variation of any form which means our del q oops our del q at t2 is zero there is no variation of generalized coordinate at this particular point or at the starting point so at the ending point or starting point what does that mean so if we simply look at that expression uh, which we got as an extra term in our integration equation that was del l by del q dot times this del q from t1 to t2 so basically 
putting these limits into this expression will make this whole expression a zero this will become zero that is what i mean to say or in other words our final equation or of equation of integration gets reduced to a form it gets reduced to a form which can be rearranged as let me increase the thickness something like this after reducing and making that term extra term zero i'm writing it for any generalized coordinate you know i'm not writing q i'm writing here qi you can simply make that qi this is the end result whatever uh, the number of coordinates as parameters may be present for being defined as for l so that does not depend in fact this whole stuff is very generalized dy dt of of this q dot i so basically this big equation you get might look elegant from the point of view of mathematics but we do not appreciate its elegance being engineers or physicists we need to have a more practical form of this famous equation which is called the euler lagrange equation euler lagrange equation this is how it gets derived the euler lagrange i have skipped two steps one was from that by parts and the other of rearranging the terms but that is what you get if you do the integral basically this is the end result of euler lagrange and it speaks volumes about lagrangian formalism as a basic philosophy of mathematics and is applied vastly in solving various real world physics problems to varying degrees of hardness you can do anything with this equation this is the most powerful mathematical tool which ever exists this is called the euler lagrange let me explain each and every term in this equation which is more important than its derivation derivation was mathematically rigorous but the understanding of each and every term is what makes physics so interesting now to deal with all the terms in this equation we need to first know what that qi was which we were going uh, to use and without knowing its actual meaning that qi means generalized coordinate one thing to note here is that something important is that this form of the equation is mathematically correct but this is not what we use in our real world physics like if we apply to this a mathematical system then this turns out to be true our proof so far is correct but for complicated dynamical systems of physics or for the matter for engineering physics or engineering dynamics there we have to consider non conservative forces and there some virtual work will be there and many stuff will come up and this equation turns out to get a bit modified this gets modified and uh, it gets revamped revamped in that manner so we have to revamp the equation when we deal with those physical aspects of euler lagrange this was just a mathematical derivation of the equation now as for now we have to proceed with uh, the variable called lagrange now what does that variable lagrange mean it is the central quantity of mathematical importance not much useful physically and this lagrange this l is equal to t minus v t is the total kinetic energy of the system under study and v is the potential energy of that system this is another uh, physical aspect of euler lagrange this type of an expression this is one idea which is used widely and the other idea is euler lagrange equation these two when combined form the basis of being a powerful tool of mathematics and now we have to define lagrange as a variable or you can say a function depending on those multiple parameters which i was talking of in the previous sections so i said that l was a function of q1 q2 like that till some qn it was also a function of it also depends rather on q1 dot first order derivative of q1 
then we have q2 dot till qn dot n is finite integer and it also depends on time so what do we exactly mean by q1 what is q1 what is q2 or for the matter why do we have it till qn why do we have this n term why is it so much generalized what's the purpose of this kind of a great generalization being made well let me tell you that there is also another expression h which becomes or turns out to be rather this t plus v of a system this is called the hamiltonian and hamiltonian this is something altogether different it is used in hamiltonian mechanics so you can see the plus sign appearing and this has got some great physical significance it's like that basically the total energy of the system but when you use a minus sign over here in between t and v it simply becomes physically futile that becomes the lagrange and we use this hamiltonian mechanics in quantum physics that's uh, altogether a different branch in the next video coming up we are going to deal with generalized coordinates and we are going to solve problems by developing a systematic approach of using these two ideas that l is equal to t minus v one of the central ideas and the other idea is that our euler lagrange equation the d by dt of this partial of l with respect to partial of q i dot first order derivative of our generalized coordinate that becomes equal to the partial of l with respect to partial of q i so this is basically another central idea and if you say that what is the purpose of all these rigorous mathematical treatment of the subject of theoretical physics well let me tell you that well lagrangian mechanics does not exactly deal with the type and kind of forces acting in various directions here we do are not concerned about forces at all we are least concerned about forces what matters here is the energy it is one such quantity which goes with the basic principle of least action also that principle of least action turns out to be consistent with that f equal to ma you use in your high school level world of isaac newton so in newtonian mechanics now i won't show why is it consistent with newtonian mechanics because that is beyond scope of our discussion at this present moment but i can only say that it is consistent lagrangian mechanics involves energies but gets results which are very much consistent with newtonian mechanics but in some cases even newtonian mechanics fails to pro provide results without loss of generality whereas lagrangian mechanics will not compromise with the generality of our solution we are getting it will be the most general and mathematically rigorous treatment of any problem you have in your hand thank you now we are going to continue the next part in the next video where we are going to basically break down all of these central ideas into the individual units and we are going to study each and every variable you got to see in this video so that will basically deal with the explanation of whatever we have written so far